the 4130 it's so juicy so sexy so full of excitement it's propelling you towards the future and it comes from that that place of decrease the pressure of decrease the pressure of the void in some sense the void which is the start codon decrease lack emptiness Lacan was right all desire stems from a fundamental lack and we see that in the body graph chart where gate 41 the gate of lack the gate of decrease the pressure, the fuel that burns in emotional passion and propels us towards that gate 30, that desire. I have a completely undefined solar plexus, and I only have one gate pointing at it, 12. So I can see people who have the other six solar plexus channels very well. I can see the quality of their emotional energy. I can see the wave. And after they leave, I continue to digest and process that wave. I continue to ride that wave with them. We're together on the wave, and then they leave the room. They leave my aura. They go home for the night. And both of us, in some sense, together, experience that wave. And as that wave is experienced... It is the dawning realizations or recognitions of feelings, the recognition of feelings, how you feel about something, how you feel about someone. And for someone with an undefined solar plexus, that's terrifying. Because for the undefined solar plexus, which is avoiding confrontation and truth, it doesn't necessarily want to share its feelings. Sharing those feelings changes the feelings. When you don't share them, they just remain in the realm of fantasy and desire. And sharing them is, you know, it's, it's different. Once, you know, they demand to be shared. It's collective. It wants to be shared. And yet that sharing itself triggers new feelings. When you're spending time with someone and you really like them and they really like you and you recognize that feeling, and then you share that with them. It changes the feeling. It introduces new feelings. It, the wave moves. It, it can depotentiate it. It can get scary. I mean, the wave, for me, for someone like me with completely undefined solar plexus, it's terrifying and exhilarating. And it gets really scary because, you know, I share my feelings with someone. Say I'm spending time with a 4130. And then they leave, and then in my clarity about how I feel about them, I share my feelings with them about how I feel about them. And you know, maybe I shouldn't necessarily share with them. <laughs> maybe the 4130 only needs to share its feelings with someone. You know, maybe it's enough to tell someone else that feeling. But I think it isn't. I don't think it's just about verbalizing the feelings. I think it's about feeling the feelings. It's about sharing in the feelings together. It's about sharing in the feeling that you have with that person so that they can feel that feeling too. Or sharing it with someone else. That's what's so funny about it. It's just a mechanic. It's just a mechanic. But this channel, it's, it propels you. It's a pressurized emotional channel. And as a pressurized emotional channel, it propels you towards the new experience. It propels you into the experience. You feel swept away. That can be true of all of the, all three of the root solar plexus channels. They sweep you away. But the tribal can sweep you away into a bond. And that bond is a very hard time being broken. Third lines take note. The tribal bond is glue. 
it sweeps you away into a Venus flytrap or into a, you know, into a sand pit. Not to be negativistic about the tribal. It can also sweep you into a mutually supportive relationship. And the individual, I mean, that sweeping happens when you're not looking. You just turn around and you've been swept while you, while, you, know, while you weren't paying attention. Because that 3955, it mutates in the space between the notes. But the 4130, it sweeps you into experience. It pushes you into experience. And it demands that you savor that experience. And that you savor having the desire, because the only thing that is certain is once you achieve the object of the desire, there's once again the fundamental lack, that gate 41 of decrease, which once again reorients that desire. And if we think of 55 as eternally indecisive love, 30, you know, well, it's not, it's not a love gate, but it's, it could be something like eternally moving desire. And 41, which is a love gate, which is a love gate, there's a lot of love in this channel. You can feel the love in this channel. And people can mistake that for a personal love. It's not. It is an impersonal love. It's not transpersonal. You know, when, when we divide the love gates, we look at the transpersonal and we look at the personal. And in some sense, it is personal uh, just because it has to do with the person, with the individual. But in another sense, everything collective is impersonal. In that, you know, if the groom doesn't show up for the wedding, all of the best, you know, the best man takes a step over and all of the grooms, the groomsmen just take a step to the left. It's impersonal in the sense that it's ready to desire anyone. It's ready to desire, you know, it's open to desiring the stranger. It's open to desiring the other that it hasn't met yet. So in that sense, all collective experiential is impersonal. The logical is also impersonal, just in a different way. It's not about being open to the experience with the other. It's about hmm, maybe turning the other into a number, into a pattern. So in that sense, it's more depersonalizing. And while logic depersonalizes, and while the abstract experiential circuitry, which is what 4130 belongs to, is sort of impersonal in who it will have the experience with. And yet, this is the human experiential way. The 4130 is the beginning of the human experiential way. 41 is Parsifal, wondering what's out there. Wondering what's on the other side of the edge of the known lands that he can go to. And his mother weaves him the shirt and he goes off in his adventures and eventually destroys his shirt woven by his mother, you know, symbolizing his freedom from that, that fundamental lack or deprivation from being in that state of union with the family unit and setting out to adventure and setting out into the world to meet the fates. See, gate 30 is also the gate of the fates. And it can be this fear of fate. They can be struck by a sudden fear of fate. And anyone like me with an undefined solar plexus who spends a significant amount of time with the 4130 can be struck by the fear of fate. And what if they're taken away from me? And what if fate swoops in and something unforeseen happens? And so this wave can be a wave of nervousness about fate towards honest and raw recognition and sharing of feelings. 
and it can move between the two. And once the feelings are shared, that fear of fate can kick into high gear. As soon as you say, I like you, I think, you know, I have feelings for you and feelings about you. And as soon as you say that to someone, the fear of fate, the other side of the wave, the crash is waiting. The high wave never stays on the high wave forever. It's impossible to share your feelings forever without having some repercussions from that. But those repercussions are not the end of the world. This is what the emotional wave teaches us. Those repercussions, that crashing of the wave where the fear of fates rises up and the fear that the sharing of feelings will have triggered some fateful event. It doesn't last. Feelings don't last. Logic lasts. Feelings do not. Experiences last in the sense that they make an indelible mark on us. And the feelings that we get about those experiences, well, they have a lifespan. And they have a um, shelf life. And they have a finite, they are a finite resource. And this is where the fantasy and the desire come from, which is the fact it's a finite resource. You can't just have one experience and then suck the emotional juice from that one experience forever. At a certain point, you've savored all the emotional juice from it. You need a new experience, a new experience. You don't even know what it is yet. It's being propelled into the unknown, but not gate 51 of the ego, which bravely goes into the unknown and proves its courage. There's nothing about bravery or courage or any of this. It's simply, uh, oh, is it love? Is it lust? Is it just, you know, what is it? What is the feeling? And this is the question that the 4130 is answering through their emotional wave, which is the wave of the recognition of feelings. The other waves are not the same. They're not. They're not about recognition. I mean, the projected, it's, it's not even a projected channel. I mean, that, that's what's interesting. When we look at the, the solar plexus channels, there's only, or excuse me, <clears throat> it is a projected channel. And there's only four pr projected channels. And so in some sense, they're all about recognition. They're all about recognition, and yet they're not necessarily about recognizing the feeling in that way. Um, that 3740 can be re about recognizing the whole that you're, you should be a part of. Uh, that 3955 can be recognizing what will provoke the spirit, or recognizing, uh, you know, the indecisiveness versus when that 55, when the spirit is on one side or the other and recognizing which side of the binary it's on. Is it on the love or the hate? Is it on the yes or the no? So there are four projected channels, so it's, it's not that the channel of recognition is the only one. It's just the only one about recognizing feelings. 1949 can even be just about recognizing material resources, recognizing who has the resources. It's flirting as a way of looking for those resources. None of this has to do with the recognition of feeling that the, that the 4130 is. So the recognition of feelings. You don't get it for free. You don't get the recognition of feelings just instantly, you know. You get it by going through the wave. You have to process that wave. You have to feel that wave. You can't repress and hide from that wave. You can't force impulsive behavior to try to expunge that wave and change that wave and make new waves that cover up that wave. You have to feel it. And by feeling it, you recognize one feeling after the next, after the next. until you get to the end. 
and all of the recognition has been used up for that night, for instance. Oh, there are other aspects of that recognition. I mean, it can get very meta. A projector with this channel can be recognized for those qualities as well, the qualities of desirousness and of fantasy and for the effect they have on others of enlivening them with that desire and fantasy. So the recognition is a multivalent term here. It's not just the individual recognizing the feelings, because it can also be recognized. In other words, someone like me who doesn't have anything in that channel and who has an undefined solar plexus can feel the quality of that emotional energy of the other who has the 4130. And can feel if it's a clean energy. Is it a, you know, in the sense of, is it, you know, how does it feel? How does that quality of feeling feel? Does it feel repressed? Does it feel stuffed up? Does it feel bitter and sour? Does it feel sweet? Particularly with projectors. Particularly if that person's a projector, it's going to be a, a real binary between the sweet and the sour. And so that there is also the recognition of the emotional wave going through different feelings and something like the composure or the demeanor or the attitude of the projector who is going through that. And is their attitude sweet or bitter? So there's a recognition of that sweetness within this channel. As someone with a completely undefined solar plexus, my life is gray and neutral and basically has no life in it. This is the human experiential way when there aren't emotionally defined people around. And yet... I'm so careful about being in a road trip with an emotionally defined person. I'm basically signing up to go on their wave with them. And if I'm too chicken to confront them about their wave, sometimes we just get stuck at a certain point in the wave. And I'm terrified to confront them about that and try to, you know, move on to the next part of the wave. And, you know, or maybe it shouldn't be rushed. Although oftentimes I can kind of tell as someone with an undefined solar plexus whether, whether that person is in a situation where the wave needs to be savored or with whether they're in a situation where the wave needs to, to be expressed, in other words. Are they stewing in the wave, which is a good stewing, or are they repressing the wave and preventing it from being expressed so that it may be ruminated on, so that it may be digested and experienced and processed? And as a sort of doctor of other people's, you know, you know emotional waves in some sense, which anyone with an undefined solar plexus de facto becomes through going to school of the school of undefined solar plexus you know getting the wisdom of the undefined solar plexus and what it really is is a wisdom of when to confront it's a wisdom of when that wave is paused when that wave is repressed you can think of the wave as a conveyor belt when that conveyor belt has stopped moving something has become stuck it needs to start moving again And that can happen when people repress, when they repress the wave. When they hide the wave, when they keep it bottled up inside, when they don't share those feelings, because it's a binary. It's the recognition of feelings which are then shared. It doesn't guarantee that they will be shared. It doesn't even guarantee that they'll be recognized. And yet that is what is called for. But the refusal to recognize the feeling and the refusal to share the feeling, perhaps because of the fear of fate, that if one recognizes the feeling, that if one shares the feeling, the fates will intervene. and Everything will be different. 
the feeling will evaporate. And yet it's just the emotional wave. It's never the end. It's never the end. The emotional wave can feel more like the end of the world than anything. And it's never the end. There are no beginnings and endings. There are only comings and goings. Rilke. And with the emotional wave, anytime it goes, you can be sure it will come back. Now, there is a clarity that emerges over time from all of this coming and going. And it's that clarity that it will come back or that it's gone for good. And if it's gone for good, it was a passing thing. And if it comes back, but again, there's no certainty. Just because it's always come back doesn't mean it always will. Every relationship has a lifespan. Every form of intimacy has a lifespan. And what the solar plexus tells you is the pace at which to develop the relationship. And if you don't know how to handle that energy, you rush it. Or if you're scared of it, you let it rot on the vine, so to speak. The wisdom of the solar plexus is the wisdom of the pace at which we bond. 